Hi everyone, welcome back. Today I'm filming a really, really exciting video and I'm gonna tell you all about my favorite books from 2017. So the books I'm gonna talk about in this video are just books that I have discovered this year and read for the first time this year. I'm not gonna include rereads because if I did, then year after year, books like To Kill a Mockingbird and Little Women and Harry Potter would come up again and again because they are my favorite books of all time. So I'm just gonna ignore those and talk about new books that I discovered this year. Also, I just wanted to say that there is no set number of books in this video. I thought about doing like a top 10 of 2017, but when I was thinking about what books I'd read this year and looking at my Goodreads, there were some that stood out to me more than others and ones that I think are just definitely my favorites of the year. So I'm just gonna talk about those. I think there's like six. Also, I'm not gonna rank them against each other because I like them all for very different reasons and they're all quite different, so I wouldn't wanna put them against each other. I just love them all and they're all favorites and I'd highly recommend each and every one of them. So the first novel, which is without a doubt one of my favorites from this year is Tin Man by Sarah Winman. And this is quite a short literary fiction novel that tells the story of two men, Ellis and Michael, who are best friends and have been best friends ever since they met when they were 12 years old in Oxford. The two men are inseparable and then when Ellis meets his lovely bride-to-be, Annie, the two become a three. However, don't let this kind of quiet premise let you think that this novel is not massively impactful because it certainly is. <laughs> So this novel is told from Ellis's point of view in the first half and Michael's in the second half and it's told in present day but the narrative also jumps around back in time so we can see the characters when they're younger and that way we can kind of piece together bit by bit the whole story that's going on. So I absolutely loved the characters in this novel. They were so, so strong. They were definitely some of the best characters that I've read about in a while. They were all so well drawn and well developed and they were perfectly flawed as well, which I love in a character. It makes them so believable and real to me. But not only were the central characters, Ellis, Michael and Annie really great, the side characters were brilliant as well. Nobody seemed underdeveloped or kind of unnecessary to the story as a whole, which I really, really appreciated. Not only are the characters in this novel absolutely brilliant, this is genuinely one of the best portrayals of love and friendship and understanding that I have ever read about. It deals with so many different complexities and truths, but it deals with them in such an insightful and tender way that it was such a joy to read about, but it was definitely an emotional time. <laughs> I honestly thought that this novel was pretty much perfect, if such a novel can exist. I just thought it was so simple but so beautiful and Sarah Women really crafts it so brilliantly and she wastes no words. And I would highly recommend this to anyone. If you enjoy literary fiction or even if you don't, I think anyone would get something out of this novel. It is truly, truly wonderful. So the next book that I want to talk about is When Breath Becomes Air by Paul Kalanithi. This is actually Paul Kalanithi's memoir and it tells the story of him as a 36 year old man who when he's on the verge of completing a decade of really intensive neurosurgeon training, he is diagnosed with inoperable lung cancer. So through this memoir, we see Paul Kalanithi transition from being a doctor to being the patient himself. And in the face of all this and in the face of his death, he questions some really big things. He wants to find out what the meaning of his life is um, with all this going on around him. And this was a really major theme of the novel. And I absolutely love this because the philosophical spin is definitely something that I'm really interested in. And we see Paul Kalanithi kind of piece together all the things that he's ever learned throughout his life to do with biology and literature and morality. And he kind of uses all this to give himself some kind of answer to this question. This book is so raw and just so touching. Paul Kalanithi does not shy away from difficult questions and just the harsh realities that face him, which I really, really appreciated while reading. Overall, I just thought this book was so inspiring and Paul Kalanithi's kind of reflection and positivity was just so admirable. And I would recommend this to anyone, even if you don't read much nonfiction, I think we can all learn something from this book. Next, I'm gonna talk about The Gustav Sonata by Rose Tremaine, which is a historical literary fiction novel set in 1940s Switzerland. This tells the story of protagonist Gustav Perler, who we meet as a young boy, and he lives quite a lonely childhood because he's utterly devoted to his widowed mother, but because of some past demons, she is strangely cold towards him. But then one day at school, Gustav meets Anton Zwiebel, a young Jewish boy, and the two become instant best friends. So throughout this novel, we follow Gustav over quite a few decades and we get to see the way that his friendship with Anton develops. And this was really interesting, especially because there's quite a lot of trials and tribulations that they are met with and difficult circumstances that their friendship has to overcome. So that was really interesting to read about. 
but I also really liked reading about the side characters in this novel just as much as the main characters, especially Gustav's mother. She was such a fascinating character to me and we don't really know much about her as the story begins and we don't know why she is so cold towards Gustav but we end up learning a bit about her before Gustav was born and also about her husband, Gustav's father and we get to see the way that the early war years really affected her and have completely changed her outlook on people and life in general and I thought that was a really interesting insight. The strength of this novel for me was definitely Rose Tremaine's really clever way of looking at a vast tangle of human relationships and the way that they can be so complex and the way that they can weave in and out of each other. I just thought this was so fascinating and her writing was really beautiful as well. I would highly recommend picking this novel up for its subtlety and its self-awareness and I think it was really really brilliant and I'll definitely be picking up more by Rose Tremaine in the future. Next I'm going to talk about White Teeth by Zadie Smith and this was actually my first ever experience of reading Zadie Smith and I was absolutely blown away by it. This is an epic but at the same time incredibly intimate novel that follows the story of two different North London families from the 1930s to the 1990s and the heads of both these families are the stereotypically English and unremarkable Archie and his best friend Samad who is a Bengali Muslim. Throughout this novel we learn about so many different people who are involved in these families and also were just connected with these families at different times and it is so rich in detail. It's not actually structured like a novel typically is, there is no like story arc and climax in the middle. It is quite similarly paced all the way through and we're merely just kind of witnessing these characters lives. Also, Zadie Smith doesn't really skip over the mundane kind of conversations and day-to-day -day tasks. We witness all of this for all of these different characters and I just thought that was so fascinating. This was so interesting to me as all the different characters in this novel were just so different to me in terms of religion, race, class or just the years in which they were brought up and so I thought this was so, so insightful and it just really gave me a great insight into different people's lives. My experience of reading this novel was so unique to me because it is so dense and because it is so slow paced. While this may put you off, please don't let it. I thought it was so interesting and so fascinating and I'd urge you to give it a go. Zadie Smith's writing is also just so brilliant. I was constantly impressed when I was reading it about how intelligent she is and also just the humour that she managed to put into this novel even though it was just about day to day things and I would highly, highly recommend this one. Next I'm going to talk about another historical novel and that is Homegoing by Yaga Yassi. At the beginning of this novel it is set in 18th century Ghana and we see two different sisters, Essie and Effia, and they go down very different paths. One of them is sold into slavery and is consequently shipped off to America and the other sister actually marries a rich slave owning Englishman. And then the story kind of forks off in the two different directions and we follow the two different sisters, family trees, down through generations. So from the time in which they were born until present day and each chapter also alternates between the two different sisters sides of the family tree. So this novel is absolutely massive in scope and it covers so much ground and I really like the way this was structured because it allowed you to be introduced to so many different characters in different circumstances and different times and I just thought this was so fascinating and it was particularly interesting to see the way that these people's lives were shaped due to the previous generations in the family and also the way that the slave trade kind of had an impact that reverberated through so many different generations. I just thought that was so interesting. I had also not read many books about African history before I'd read this so I found it really interesting for that reason. I felt like I really got quite an insight into Ghanaian culture which I thought was fascinating and so this book was quite good from an educational aspect as well. I really feel like this novel took me on such a journey while I was reading it and I felt like I got to witness so much throughout the reading experience and so I'd really recommend this novel to anyone. It's also just so beautiful and I found it to be really really hard hitting in the stories that it tells. And finally, another one of my favourite books of the year was The Tobacconist by Robert C. Thaler and I actually don't have that one here to show you because my boyfriend's mum is boring off me. This is a historical literary fiction novel set in 1937 that follows protagonist Franz who at 17 years old moves from his home in the Austrian Lake District to the bustling city of Vienna. While he's in Vienna he gets a job in a tobacconist with his mother's friend Otto and while he's here he gets to meet all of Otto's regular customers, the most regular of which being a Professor Sigmund Freud. I love this novel for many different reasons, the first of which being it's just such a brilliant coming of age story about a young man who is trying to navigate his way around his new life in a new place 
but also new relationships he forms as well, both romantically and sexually, and also just friendships he has with different people of all ages. I thought this was all quite touching and very relatable, and the relationship that Franz has with Professor Freud in particular was really sweet and really quite humorous. Professor Freud gives Franz life advice basically on kind of how to find happiness and love advice as well, and some of the scenes of those two together kind of having these discussions were so sweet and definitely some of my favourite moments in the novel. As well as all this, this novel is also just a really powerful depiction of the way that ordinary lives were profoundly affected by Nazi Germany in the 1930s. The characters were drawn so well and so believably that this ordinariness about them just made it all the more kind of impactful while reading about the effects that the war had on them. I also really liked the way that the war wasn't the focus of the novel, the focus of the novel was the people, and then the war was just something that massively and dramatically impacted on these people's lives, kind of with a focus on the people rather than the war. I hope that all made sense, but this novel is just so beautifully written and so well executed on so many different levels, and I would really, really highly recommend it, and I'm so excited to read more by this author in the future. <laughs> So those are my absolute favourite books that I read for the first time this year. I love telling you about them all. If you've read any of the books that I've mentioned in this video, please comment down below and then we can talk about them. <laughs> but even if you haven't read any of them, please let me know what your favourite book of 2017 was. I'd love to know. Hopefully I can pick up a few recommendations. So thank you so much for watching this video. I really, really appreciate it as always, and I'll see you soon with a new video. Bye.